This is great to follow uh, Chris's uh, Chris's talk because there's some aspects of uh, of her uh, dealing with the uh, with the image that uh, we weren't sure how we were going to um, I guess to include in our uh, in our presentation. Our presentation is about the image, um, and Chris has you know one particular way of, of of speaking about the image, which I think is a more tactile one. We're going to be uh, sort of going down one level and just hopefully try to uh, to present it all at a processional level and hopefully you guys uh, can make that uh, that uplink to the uh, sort of to the actual presentation of the image so for us an image is not really you know an image you can see on the on the wall but it's a, a processual thing and uh, hopefully you can keep that in mind as we uh, you know as I as I present this so um, our presentation is, uh, is entitled The Image as a Process of Invention Within Artistic Research. To think about the image is to already activate and engage in artistic research. And to think about artistic research in a hybrid world, we need a different approach to think the image, one which considers both the natural and the technological milieu. In the face of the complex, hybrid, expanded reality we find ourselves in, the polarized relation between human and machine is no longer tenable. In this perspective, we look to elaborate on a concept of the image which goes beyond the anthropocentric scheme and takes into account the process-based, mutable, and systemic thinking of a hybrid and expanded world. We advance that the image occurs within an associative concretization that integrates a hybrid actuality. Here, hybrid refers to the acknowledgement of the simultaneous coexistence of the natural and the artificial in Simon Don and Jean-Luc Nancy, of the actual and virtual in Deleuze and Guattari, of the human and not human in Bruno Latour, of physical space and cyberspace in Roy Ascot. We bring these questions on the image to the field of art and technology at a moment in which we find ourselves constituted by physical and digital dimensions. How can one maintain the division between mental images and concrete images, between images related to the imaginary, to memory, and mental constructs, and images related to invention within a technological poetics at the junction of cyberspace and geographical space? How can one maintain the division within technological poetics which builds cyborgs and crosses the animal, human, the vegetal, the micro and nanobiological, the machinic, to create expanded minds and bodies? We speak of informational territories, of cyber cities, of cyberspace, telematics, mixed realities, augmented realities, expanded systems, ultra-organized systems, ecosystems, artificial life, nano art, and I can't, this thing is driving me crazy. <laughs> Sorry, just that's not scrolling properly. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll, like it just jumps from one page to the next. Is this true? So right. you have to escape maybe the, the okay. full view of the end. Maybe now? Just like Okay, just all right. Do that. Should work now, but just, just try. Yeah, it's fine. Yes, great. Okay, sorry about that. If I can find myself where we were. Um... We speak of informational territories, of cyber cities, of cyberspace, telematics, mixed realities, augmented realities, expanded systems, ultra-organized systems, ecosystems, artificial life, nano art, neuro art, the semantic web, biological software, evolutive hardware, bio art, the internet of things. Notions which bring us to think our existence in a hybrid and expanded way without invoking other spatio-temporal conceptions exclusively physical or measurable within closed systems. We note that initial considerations in the field of art and technology tend towards affirmations that separate the real and the virtual, as if the virtual was not part of the real, as if we could separate the real as a physical dimension and the virtual as a digital dimension. However, these positions become more and more tenuous in face of increasing hybridizations between both dimensions. From a delusion standpoint, whether we speak of physical space or cyberspace, there are always virtual potentialities to be actualized as well as actualized experiences to be virtualized. Thus, the image can be understood as a composite layered experience in a multifaceted and hybrid reality, and the artwork as a cause effect of the activity of imagination and invention within artistic process. Within such an approach, 
The image is not restricted to the usual optical perception of objects, but is directly related to systems of association within the milieu to which it belongs. In this manner, we bring the, the idea of image, milieu, and invention as a process of individuation within artistic research. Assuming that images exist between the subject and the milieu, the images are open to becoming, and that images do not only belong towards, belong towards consciousness, we can discern similarities between the approaches to the image by Deleuze and Simondon. In discussing the image of thought and difference in repetition, Deleuze considers a process of eliminating all presuppositions to thought as a way to begin with philosophy. He writes that this would entail at the very least a regression to perceptual experience as pure being in order to constitute a beginning, even if it is only by virtue of referring all its presuppositions back to a sensible, concrete, empirical being which can be known implicitly without concepts. And in trying to explain consciousness as a reflection of experience, experience comes to be expressed as a majestic, that is, as an image which fully expresses our being with, through, and in the world, even if to express experience solely in terms of the optically pictorial is to shortchange its indescribable fullness. There's not only the sense data of the other five senses to contend with, but their combined and expressible effectual elusiveness, as well as the indiscernible hidden of the stratified plateaus, understanding experience. Simondon presents a theory of the image in light of the notion of invention, and invention in light of the notion of the image. Simondon's ideation of the image also steers away from a static conception. It is understood as emergent within the associated milieu through a transductive, four-phased cyclic process, which includes the motor image, the perception image, the mental image, and the invention image. Through these phases, one can modulate the relation between the human and the milieu, and thus eliminate any polarizing hierarchical importance between participating elements in the genesis of the image. The image is thus understood as a transient, intermediate reality between individuals and milieus existing within an evolutive technological multiplicity. Echoing Bergson, Deleuze points out that we don't perceive things in our mind. We perceive things where they are in the world. And Jean-Luc Nancy points out along the same lines that the image is that which we can distinguish from the background. Thus, within the speculative approach, image is not restricted to the usual visual perception of objects, but is directly related to systems of relationship with the milieu to experience itself. Things exist as a polymorphic, evolutive, and temporal diversity in a transductive relationship between the coexistent memory image of the past, the perception image of the present, and the invention image of the future. The image appears in the directed interaction between participants and the environment they are in. It is not just produced by a subject. Rather, the image produces and develops a subject and allows it to manifest itself as an imminent function of creation while being relatively independent from it. We live in a world of images. They inhabit us and create our worlds. They actualize us and virtualize us according to different realities. We understand the image not as an, ind as an individualized given to be analyzed, but as a process of individuation. The genesis of the image is conceived within a systemic, cyclic, and processual approach to reality, where the cycle is made up of four coexisting phases, as uh, stated earlier, the motor image, the perception image, the mental image, and the invention image. One important aspect to keep in mind is that the milieu is not a single homogeneous image. Although the associated milieu can be seen as a unitary subjective imagistic process, the milieu is composed of a multiplicity of simultaneous subsidiary imagistic processes at different stages of phasic becoming interactive imagistically with each other. Each type of image is productive of specific results which serve as objective imagistic raw material towards the production of new images. Depending on what they do and how they relate to the type of image being produced, these intermediate imagistic hybrids go by different names, objects, motricity of nervous excitation, signs, symbols, and as will be seen later, these intermediate hybrid images are the hinges that allow the transition from one phase to the next. With the motor image, the conditions are created for the adaptation of the living and the non-living elements to the milieu. Through a constant effect of motor activity, the image creates an a priori situation for the future perceptive identification of the object. Motor movement precedes sensory perception so that for the stimulus response to occur, a high level of organization is required for the reception of the signs within the milieu. Hence, 
It is the image that makes the object emerge for the subject and precedes the object itself. It is the very genetic programming of an organism over its milieu. In order to provide examples of the motor image, we offer situations which refer to adaptations to the milieu, attunements which directly link motricity to instinct. We know that when babies are born, they initially do not recognize the figure of their mothers. Instead, there is an indefinite form which satisfies its motor need for suction and food. Only later, the infant will have the capacity to recognize the mother figure, the breast object, the nipple, etc. Activities carried out automatically and unconsciously, that is, without the intermission of conscious thought, go through the various senses, the gustatory, the ocular, the tactile, the olfactory, the synesthetic, to satisfy motor needs through, uh, brought on by instinct of stimulus. Jean-Luc Nancy points out in agreement with Simondon that the image is not only visual, it is also musical, poetic, even tactile, olfactory or gustatory, kinesthetic, and so on. Image is not only visual, but is a motricity produced automatically through the senses functioning together. In complexifying the motor image, we can involve issues related to art and technology. We bring forth propositions which put in question the relation between the natural and the artificial, the human and the non-human, the structure of bodies and their actions and connections. As Latour writes, art and nature have merged, folding into one another and forming a continuous sensorium. In the interaction with new technologies, the body expands its motor structures and its physical and mental functions. It acquires other meanings, other, others' means of feeling, of perceiving, of acting, and of thinking. For Gennetti, from a post-biological perspective, what currently makes sense is no longer the freedom of ideas, but the freedom of forms, the freedom to modify and change the body. People assemble by fragments our post-evolutionary post experiments. For example, when Stellark implants an ear on his arm, he, instead, he intends to augment the speed of his body by linking it to the web, thus producing an other analogical digital body. It would be senseless to assert that the digital milieu would reject the body, so that for Simondon, there's a biological and technological evolution without separating nature and technology. From the motor images produced by motricity, bodies are able to develop sensorialities in relation to the milieu, which give rise to the perception image. Perception is, as Masumi writes, real movement because something has happened. The body has been capacitated. It's been relationally activated. The perception image enables the interaction of a subject with the world, and the object emerges from the experience as the beginning of a new phasing. But because the milieu is of multiplicity, the process is not so linearly straightforward. Intermediary, intermediary images are produced from the imagistic interaction of images in different phases, from the action of signs on the living and the non-living within the associated milieu, a number of responses will result. The images will organize themselves progressively as an effective experience in repetition. The image is not passive. It is differential activity that is constantly emerging. The perception image evokes an action with the object based on the perception of the milieu signs. The object appears through the perception image of the signs of the milieu which in turn become objects. Perception is not an action of the subject outside and above a milieu which contains objects, but an effect of non-hierarchical systemic uh, relations which includes subjects, subsidiary images, objects, and milieus. Perception exists between that which perceives and what is perceived. The perception arises from this relational process between things, making explicit that they are always becoming something in the action of living. A creature's perceptions are its actions in their latent states. Perceptions are possible actions. Technological devices are ever more altering our perceptions of the milieu, influencing the signs contained within themselves, transforming them, mixing them, incorporating them through the construction of digital milieus and hybrid images in interactive installations of augmented reality with goggles, tablets, smartphones, etc. As such, the everyday images that we perceive are essentially technological images analog and digital, which hybridize our experience as a magistic process. With experience in telematics, Roy Ascot speaks about the faculty of post-biological cyber perception. Through cyber perception, we can perceive our capacity to be outside of our bodies or act out a mental symbiosis with others in fields which can articulate our multiple natures or a new understanding of non-linear or non-categorial patterns in rhizomatic assemblages. The mental images arises 
in an analogous manner in relation to the world. Afterwards, the motor images and perceptual images are mentally organized and systematized according to an effective, to an effective emotional attunement with the external milieu as memorial process. As Simon Don states, memories consist of images that have been retained when the situation and the experience no longer exist. To think memory as imagistic process with digital technologies requires that we expand its conception to hybrid or collective memories. With the internet, we are faced with collective memory which is fed continuously from data produced in various media and shared by certain modes of data visualizations. Mental images produce collective symbols which when saturated generate invention images. The symbol is a pseudo object between the living and the milieu so that the symbol is an instrument for invention but not an invention in itself. The invention image produces a spatio-temporal imagistic shift within the environment. The invention image is directly related to the technical and aesthetic invention where the creative imagination is the ability to invent technical and aesthetic objects from the capacity for symbolization and communication. As Simondo writes, in the very production of the image, all objects produced by man are image objects which the imagination concretizes. The aesthetic object is an effect of the activity of invention, but mainly it is an opening to unforeseen primitive realities. Thus, the invention image modifies the conditions of its natural existence. We understand invention as a mode of human and non-human existence by activating fluxes of fields through the action of the future on the present as opening new regimes of images. To emphasize the difference between human and non-human becomes pointless now that active objects are increasingly taking the place that was once occupied by humans. When we talk about the Internet of Things, generative or artificial intelligence, we need to shift our anthropocentric understanding and make room for objects. Thus, Simondon refers to the genesis of the image as a cycle which does, which does not close on a specific phase. The invention image is not the end of the cycle, but only a phase that is related to the others. After invention, which is the fourth phase of the becoming of images, the cycle starts anew with a fresh anticipation of the encounter with the object, which in fact can be its production. This is the foundation of uh, difference in repetition. In the images we have discussed are made by the four faces of the image. In all of them, there are aspects of the motor image, perception image, mental image, and invention image. Deleuze and Simondon present concepts of the image that leave the image open to a process to its own individuation. Understanding the process of individuation directs us towards an ontogenesis of being, of individuals and milieus, of the human and the non-human, towards a genesis of the image concerned with how things become rather than what they are or what their final configuration will be. Thinking in this way can support art research and art that adjusts itself over time and comes into existence just in the process of construction taking shape. This is a thought which can sustain art research, which modifies over time and enters into the raw process of matter taking form. It is a way to understand experience as a way of individuation and not as personal experience. Parts of the spectator, of the artist which remain in the work, of the work, of the technology which enter into the individuation. When it comes to experience, these are not the experiences of individuals, but of a process of individuation that does not focus on what is, but on its becoming. We can refer to this as an ontogenesis that goes beyond the artwork or the human. Thus, we consider that the work, the artist, the spectator, and the milieu are mixed. They compose a multiplicity of individuations within the habitat as they actively incorporate parts of the world in an autopoiesis as a becoming world. We become contaminated by these images in constant flux, by the rhythm of the milieus, by the mixture of human and non-human elements. And that's how we come to be part of the imagistic process of the associated milieu. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.